A train is due to pass through on track one. Please stand back from the platform edge. Hi there. When I started out with uh, model railroading, I started out with DC based systems and they were more or less based on transformers like this. You had a power input and you had power output and you had a sort of little speed regulator you could adjust back and forth. Um, that was it. Um, if you wanted to control more trains, you had to split up your tracks uh, in different sections and have separate transformers on each track. Around 20 years ago, I got this system from uh, Roku. A very simple digital system. It was uh, very fancy for me 20 years ago. Uh, it, had, it provided uh, the basic uh, functions. You could uh, control the train and you could select different trains. You can, you know, have uh, basic functions on the uh, digital trains. These systems usually came in uh, starter sets. A couple of years later, around 2005, I uh, had this multi mouse, uh, it, which were also purchased through. Uh, a start set and if we compare them we can see that we have uh, more functions available um, and this worked out very nice for me uh, in, uh, during many years I uh, can uh, control uh, the trains I can control uh, if I had any turnouts, I could control the turnouts. In recent years, I have been expanding uh, my layout and I have also always wanted to have panels that can uh, control the turnouts and uh, maybe also signal signaling. When I was looking at alternatives, um, I quickly found out that if I wanted a really good system I would have to pay a lot of money well, I guess everything is relative uh, our trains are not cheap either but uh, basically uh, around $500 minimum for uh, a versatile uh, DCC system I am one of those people that prefer to use my money on rolling stock instead of control systems. So I try to find a balance between price and functionality. And four or five years ago, I discovered something that was called DCC++. Basically what it is, it is a command station that you can run on microcontrollers. And uh, so I thought, well, Maybe I can try this DCC++. Basically what the DCC++ is, for most cases, an Arduino combined with a motor driver. The last time I looked up this stuff, uh, it's uh, four or five years ago, I think, and I simply couldn't get it to work maybe a little bit premature. Yeah, I struggled really with uh, the motor uh, drivers because uh, the motor drivers cannot be used straight away with the Arduino. And the, uh, the reason you need the, the motor driver is to provide the um, DCC signal. So I forgot about all this microcontroller uh, stuff and I uh, uh, a couple of years ago I bought uh, Dig DigiKeys DR5000 and that system has been working exceptionally well for me at a somewhat cheap price. 
I bought a complete setup for uh, $250. With the upgraded module, the YD9401, it continues to be my main system for, uh, for the layout. But I have all the time wanted to have uh, an extra setup for testing. Uh, two months ago, I noticed uh, by coincidence that two new major news about the DCC++ EX uh, project. So, uh, the first thing was that they had a simplified installer. So basically you download uh, an executable file and then you install it in Windows uh, or Mac OS or, or Linux. And they had also created a dedicated motor shield for this CC. So I purchased a Arduino Mega clone with the built-in Wi-Fi. And I also purchased uh, a couple of those motor shields. So um, this is the uh, Arduino Mega 2560 clone. It has uh, the same form factor as the regular Uno, except that it is a little bit bigger and has more uh, I.O. ports, but it does also have uh, built-in Wi-Fi. And this is the new motor shield, and it fits perfectly on top. Just follow the guides, and the pin will just slide right in. You can see that the power supply connection gets in the way, so you cannot perfectly get it together. You can probably solve it by removing the uh, power connector on the Arduino Mega, because you won't need it. Uh, the power is supplied from the motor shield, which, by the way, makes everything so much easier. It looks good enough, except uh, for that we have a small gap here. The next step is to install the DCC EX software and see if we can get our trains running. And to do this, we need a USB cable and we need a laptop to connect. The first thing you need to do is open a web browser and find the DCCEX website. We need to find the supported Wi-Fi shields and boards page. As you can see, this is a Wi-Fi and Arduino Mega combo. So we need to do some special setup for this. And it says here that uh, the DCC EX team do not recommend this uh, combined Mega 2560 plus Wi Fi, but that's what I have. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to connect it to a uh, computer, and uh, it should automatically set up a USB serial port. Let's uh, check it out. And it should be listed under ports. USB serial, yes, and it is on uh, COM6. The next thing we need to do is to download and install the flash download tool, and we need to download the firmware. Like that. And we also need to have Python installed. Let's check if you have Python. We do not have Python, so we need to take care of that also. Okay, so let's see. Yes, we have Python. Excellent. The next thing we need to do is to install ESP tool. Hit install ESP. Successfully installed. Okay, next step we have two zip files. We have the flash download tool and we have the ESP266. And we extract all. Extract. And we do the same thing with the 
firmware. Now we can start the uh, flash tool. What we need to do now is to change the uh, dip switches so that we can upload firmware to the uh, Wi-Fi card and not to the Arduino cloud. To do that, we need to change the dip switches accordingly. The first four dip switches are set to off. And the next three dip switches are set to on. Like that. Uh, the last one, the dip switch number eight, we don't have to do anything about that. Like that, we are a okay. And we also have to check uh, the other dip switch setting that it is correct. This one, it has to be set to RxD3, TXD3, and it is, so that's fine. So in the flash tool, we have to do the developer mode. And we have an ESP8266 download tool. And uh, in this window, we have to be a little bit careful about what we do. We have to get all firmware files. And so the first file is boot b17bin. Open up. The next file is user1. File. file number three is the ESP init data default and the next is we do two blank bin files and we need to make sure that we are loading it into the correct region and we do that by 0x0000. Zero 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 zero. It is 0x0100. Zero 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 zero. Zero. It is 0x1fc0000. Zero 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 zero. Zero zero zero. Zero zero. And 0 And it is 0x1fe. Zero, zero, zero. Like that. And we also need to remember to mark the checkboxes. And we are going to make sure that we mark the D DO. DO, yes. And we have a 16 ba -ba 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 -ba. like this. And we need to do the COM6. And we have to use the board rate 46,000 something. You have to follow the instructions exactly. And if you don't do that, you risk breaking uh, the uh, Arduino. First, we do erase. Then we wait, and when it's finished, it push the start, and it's just a little bit waiting, and it's finished. Great. So after the firmware has finished, we disconnect. Now we have to uh, set the uh, dip switches, 
uh, for the first uh, setting back. Now it's time to upload the DCC EX uh, software. Downloads and EX installer. Press more info and then run anyway. Might be a security risk, but hey, we want to run our trains, don't we? Manage Arduino CLI. Uh, we want to enable extra platforms um, in case we want to try out other uh, microcontrollers. So let's do that. This might take a while. Windows security alert, allow access. Uh, let's see what we can see. And it found our device at COM6. And we're going to use this. It is uh, Arduino Mega or Mega 2560. Going to select what we want to install. We want to de install the command station. And we want to do the latest development. Um, usually you want to do the uh, la latest production, but uh, the latest development has something that you need. Motor driver. And we are going to the, use the EX8874 shield. I have this uh, OLED display. So I haven't tried it yet, uh, but that's something to figure out, right? Anyways, we're going to activate it. And we have a uh, Wi-Fi. And I want to connect my uh, command station to my existing wireless network. I do not have Ethernet and I want to set the track modes. Track A is main and track B is programming track. Uh, so the next is uh, compile and load. And we press load and we can see that the LEDs are flashing. So that's a good sign. So it looks like it is finished. We close the EX installer. Now we can connect the motor shield. And, and here we have the trouble. For some reason, the power connector for the Arduino gets in the way for the motor shield. But if we push gently, we should be okay. Even if there is a small gap here, it should be okay. We can, eventually we can remove the uh, power connector for the Arduino because we won't need it anymore. We will use the uh, power connector for the motor shield from now on. So, um, let's see. Uh, we should now connect the power. Um, I'm going to use 12 volt. And it's important now that we do not connect the Arduino. So that is also another reason for uh, removing it. So, um, like that. We have a green power. And we also have uh, the LEDs for the Arduino is also lit. Let's connect uh, track power. Um, like that. Okay, so you can see uh, it automatically found the um, uh, let's see um, this is the EX yes, we need uh, to start engine driver and that's because it's everything is on the same uh, VLAN. You can also set this up as an access point so that you have it in a closed network. So let's connect, and we are connected. Okay, so let's turn on track power and. We now have power, and you can also see it in the shield that uh, we have the power LEDs. Um, so this should be 3624. 3624. 
So, uh, what is the verdict? Um, first impression is uh, it's super cheap. Uh, I think this cost me uh, one Arduino and one um, motor shield. Uh, it totaled out at uh, $45. And uh, for this you get a uh, fully fledged um, uh, DCC uh, command station with both main and programming track. Anyways, uh, great value for money. Uh, I highly recommend it for anyone who needs uh, a test track. Then you can easily and cheaply uh, operate it um, outside of your, of your uh, main layout and you can also easily build it into diorama. Uh, not coming. Uh, it's not. Uh, have not come far yet, but uh, I'm planning on using one set of these on this one, and then the other set on my test bench. Um, just so that you are aware. Um, in addition to the uh, engine shield and the Arduino. You also need a uh, power supply and you need uh, uh, a laptop or a computer so that you can program uh, the Arduino. And it also helps a lot if you have uh, a spare old mobile phone so you can uh, load up engine driver and then you can connect via Wi-Fi. So yeah, highly recommend it.